in Outcast chapter 10. Plots evil um, on their lips like um, scorching fire. And according to Dr. Anderson, he talked about these scoundrels, outcasts, or people who um, have um, worked very hard. They get paid lots of money to do the stuff they do, um, to destroy the gains and successes of black people. And this whole thing about meritorious Spanish mission, which is a policy that was used during slavery to condition and instill um, internal controls into the psyche of enslaved blacks or Africans. The philosophy of wars blacks who saw slavery through the eyes of their um, slave master. Okay. And when you watch that documentary dealing with um, the Black Panthers, and we looked at um, William O'Neill, people might consider him an individual that will fall in this category. Um, informant, FBI informants. That's important. So they fall under that category. All those individuals who have uh, received payment, and you guys saw the documentary where an individual received payment for meritorious service. That was in the state. Meritorious service that he has provided over the months to the FBI that basically contributed to the death of William O'Neill. What people don't realize is if we look at history, there was an individual, and I mentioned his name by the name of Edgar Evans. There was an FBI informant, well, not FBI informant, but an informant for the uh, White Citizens Council down in Mississippi who provided Meg Evans' address to the individuals who were responsible of setting up the assassination of Meg Evans that June 12th, Wednesday night, 1963. Now, um, as you're thinking, start thinking about in your life where people have basically done things to you um, who might fall in this category? That's what we're going with this. Okay, and we're going to dive in further because we're going to look at samples. Because, you know, you can use these terms interchangeably. You know, sample is, okay, I like using handkerchief head. Okay. Um, and, and some people say, you know, we got a cone list because I get text messages, add this person to the cone list. Because they're doing something like when they were criticizing Colin Kaepernick. Come on. Okay. I thought you had a right to protest for rights. Can I move on from this? Okay. So, as you plot. So this method of social engineering is what you call social engineering. If I keep saying that a particular group is bad, what are you going to begin to think? You're going to begin to think negative about that group or that gender. It's called social engineering. It is perfected in society we live in today. So on social media, there are three things. Sense of community, trust, accountability. According to Dr. Edison, this method of meritorious manumission was later transformed into Willie Lynch and Willie Lynchism. And what is Willie Lynchism? We're going to get to that in a few minutes. Because there's a lot of Willie Lynchism going on right now. Okay, when you start to divide people based on what? We're going to see in a few minutes. Okay. So I'm going to move on from this, because like I said, i got a lot of information. And just work with me. I'm excited. Fired up. Willie Lynch. Take a picture of this, because you're going to see this on your final exam. So we're talking about Willie Lynch. A professional slave trainer in the 1700s, 18th century, provided slave owners a conditioning system um, that would guarantee internal controls to divide people based on what? Age. Don't you have a battle on age right now, where you got the um, young versus the old? Sure you do. Okay, don't you have a battle dealing with complexion, skin color? Okay, don't you have a battle of, of I always put, they put tribe, community, and then the whole thing is a battle with gender. You got the man versus the woman. Okay, we got class. You got people in your family that would not associate with you if you don't make a certain amount of money. Okay, if I'm wrong, if I'm going down your street, say it. Okay. We talk about rank. And then how do you with family? And what this does is it encourages selfishness. One of the most greediest times in the last 50 years in this country was the 1980s. I got mine, 
you get yours. They always tell you when you leave here, talk to the older heads. Do something with the younger heads because they're looking up at you. Reach back, okay? And in the 80s, I got mine. You get yours. The selfish behavior the under, in the Reagan era, very selfish. People used to look out for each other. Let's stop it. This whole thing about dividing people based on these things here. See, you got people out here that think they're better off than somebody else. Really? You really think so? And you're not. You're catching the same hell. You just don't realize it. Dr. King told one of the jailers in 1963, he says, he says, sir, how much do you make? You know, Dr. King was eloquent for practicality. And the jailer said, I make about $12 an hour. That's how they talk down in Birmingham. Still. Still. He said, you should be marching with us. Instead of pouring us with water hoses and dogs and beans. Because you're catching the same hell, son. And a lot of people think that they're really got it going on. That is it. So this is the whole thing about Willie Lynch is. Anybody in here familiar with Willie Lynch? Just a few people? Well, you now you're familiar with him. You go see this. The whole thing, the mindset. Okay, do you dislike this person because of you? Do you dislike this person because your hair is not? Do you like this person because your hair is you don't like this person because you don't care that way? Are you this color? Are you this height? Are you this size? It's all back to you. Bless you twice. Let's continue. Meritorious manumission. Notice, longest, and understanding. Service is African slaves on the plantation. And what's the goal? This is how you control people. If you go back to the previous slide, this is how you control people based on the vision. I can keep control over you by keeping you divided. If you hold out your hand, you got five digits. Is that right? You got a thumb, which controls the hand. Then you got four fingers. Okay. If somebody slaps you, it might hurt, right? But if I took my fist and balled it up and punched you, which was hard? Fist. Fist. And as long as I can keep you divided, I control you. This digit here is the thumb. I'm gonna keep my thumb, keep you under my thumb. Have you heard that quote before? Yes. <coughs> uh -huh. Keep control. What's the program? To dehuman, dehumanize and degrade. Continuously, over and over, to dehumanize and degrade people. Okay? Those are the methods. Continue saying people are dumb. People begin to what? Believe it. Continue saying that you're ugly. You begin to believe it. Continue talking about what bad hair. You begin to believe it. You're not intelligent. You begin to believe it. And this is how you pass down the Jeffersonian mentality. You begin to believe. Thus, individuals are considered less than them. They're devalued. Over and over, folks. And it's real simple. Real simple to do. If I continue to push the propaganda, you begin to believe. And you see it in all aspects of life. That's why I say when we deal with the Tokyo Awards on Tuesday, you look at it in sports, you look at it in music, entertainment. It's there, folks. People selling their souls, selling their souls <coughs> for coins, monies, benjamins. And you have to ask yourself, for what? We think about Paul Robeson, we think about William Marshall, they did not take roles that degrade and dehumanize black people. They took roles with dignity. Even William Marshall in the role of Blackula, Mama Waldy, vampire, 
I, I watched an interview where he said that he um, there were certain things that he told the producers he wanted in the film, and in the film he's speaking Swahili. Vampires with dignity. Yeah, that don't even sound right. But then again, it depends on who, who plays the role. Okay. So what does this do? Physiological, just use the elementary principles of physical, emotional, and uh, intellectual uh, deprivation. These methods were uh, conducted by the slave masters with fourth and fifth grade education. Okay. And, and if you if you move that forward, folks, to the 1960s, when you had the poll tax, and you had to take a written test just to register to vote. I want you to think about this. So you guys take it for granted that you just go in there and then you register to vote. You get your driver's license and register to vote. Mm -hmm. You had to take a poll, you take a test. And one of the questions on the test, the person giving you an examination couldn't read himself, couldn't write himself. But he gave you an examination, one of the questions on the test was, how many bowls in a bar of soap? What? Yeah. Yes. Now one, one well, it's interesting. How many, how many beans in a 12 ounce? Job, me. I can't hear you, Joe. You expect you to know that. And if they felt you answered the question correctly, they would say, okay, you can register. If he was having a bad day, guess what? You won't go register to vote that day. And then what's interesting is that when you're dealing with people who believe in this philosophy, who perpetuate this philosophy, they say you're wrong because you're trying to register your vote. Why don't you stop trying to vote? Like the skit that I showed you by Tom's. Then when Colin Kaepernick stood, he would he would be playing. Yeah, yeah, let me say that. So what's the procedure? Transport to hostile lands, made a minority and totally dependent, deprived of families, rewarded for identifying with the mindset. And what's the reaction? <coughs> Enslaved Africans assimilate, adopt white value. Say that you're not beautiful. Say that you're not intelligent. Fear slave masters display self-hate. There's a lot of self-hate. You hate yourself. Why do you hate yourself? What's the reason, Ms. Lawrence, why people hate themselves? I'm just throwing it out there, Ms. Lawrence. I know. Not, I would say sometimes not being able to live up to somebody's expectations. Okay, now those expectations, right, they're somebody else's expectations. Right. This is how you're expected to behave. This is how you're expected to think. This is how you're expected to act. Mm -hmm. This is how you're expected to dress. <clears throat> and if you violate that or go against that, you'll be criticized. Weren't you supposed to wear the weddings? Suit, tie, formal dresses. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and what color? <laughs> what? And weren't you supposed to wear the funerals? Black. black. You supposed to wear black too? Not anymore. Not as much anymore. Not as much. You supposed, when you go to the airport, you're supposed to wear a shirt with a collar. Yes, you are. You should. Who said that? That was, see? You should tell him my age. <laughs> you should. This little boy, you gotta go to the airport. You gotta, you gotta go, get dressed go in up. Go hair. I mean, no hair. Up. You gotta wear a shirt and collar. Are you kidding me? When, you, when, we, when we play games, you, you're supposed to dress. It's a business trip. So you gotta wear a shirt with a collar, yeah. or a shirt and tie. And I'm like, okay, he said a shirt and tie, or a shirt with a collar. Hmm. I don't like wearing ties. I'm, a, wear, I'm trying to figure out how I can get around this. <laughs> okay. But this is, this is how you're supposed to, this is what it's supposed to be. Formal dress. Okay. You're supposed to adopt these things, and when you go, you'll be criticized by people who look like you. But you're not supposed to wear your hair like you. You're not supposed to. It is unacceptable of a lady to wear that. You know that. Right? But you're going to just be you, right? Okay. 
Uh, you're just going to be you. That's what I expect. See, if you came in here any different, then I would sit back here and wonder. Yes, Ms. Water? Did you just call me Water? <laughs> okay. Uh, why is she not allowed to wear that? I can't hear you. You got to speak up. I said, why is she not allowed to wear that? Because she's not meeting the standards of the way she's supposed to dress. At one point, I thought they were supposed to wear that. They weren't allowed to wear their hair out. Yeah. At one point. In America. I'm not. I'm not. I don't care how she comes. Well, she comes to class as far as I'm concerned. Is she going to for no reason? I ever heard that there was something at a job that said you're not allowed to have your hair in dreads. I know you would put your hair in dreads anyway, wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. Just, just because they said you're not supposed to. In some families, in some families, you're not supposed to have facial hair. Uh-huh. Or piercing. Or piercing. Tattoos. Or tattoo. Now, they, you know, my family's getting a little soft, but you're not supposed to have any facial hair. I mean, they criticized me, but I grew a mustache. It took a long time for me to grow this, but it's what it is. Okay. Okay, what's the success rate? Okay, the descendants of slaves and the low self esteem um, remain divided. What you do, you, you hate, they hate themselves and you seek white approval and fear white people. Then you're not competitive and receive rewards for being sandbows. Now, what's the correct word? The sellout. Okay, if you don't know, you sold, you sold, you sold. You're selling out. Or you're cooning. You're selling out. You're selling out for money. Um, snitch, report behavior that will enhance the, uh, the quality of life for black people. Yes, Mr. Rudy? Um, a sambo. I never heard that before. You will in a minute. Because <laughs> the next is coming. Because depending on generation, it's, always, it's the same, it's always interchangeable. Malcolm X used to do this day, you sell out um, handkerchief head, or they call you just Uncle Tom. And they, the people still use Uncle Tom, yeah. but now people are using coons. You got a lot of coons out here. Anytime people embarrass themselves, okay, take certain 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 um, certain roles. But that's always the way you get that It's getting to that. It is, but um, um, we're gonna deal with that this in the next few. But they will use that. And a lot of people do use that term like right now. That's becoming more popular than Sambo. They say it coon in. Or they use it Sambo. Coonery, yeah, coonery. Now I say buffoonery. But yeah, like Ms. Warner said, coonery. Okay. And then um, speak negatively about any black person or group. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, hold on. Can you? Can you um, do me a favor, Stewie? Can you stop that for a minute? First, you see it in sports. Okay, when you got a lot of, um, and I'll give you an example. I'm not going to say the person's name because, like I said, I don't want to prejudice anybody because you got your choices on who you want to select. But you got a quarterback who play, he might have like 330 yards passing, he might have like four touchdowns, one running, and three passing. He might have one interception. And they're black analysts to say, yeah, but he threw one interception. They won the game. He had a good game. Yeah, he threw one pick. So what? But they always point out the negative. negative yeah. And you got that one Sambo on the set. Just pick, and you can just pick them. Like I said, I want to say some names, but I can't do that because y'all got the Toby Awards coming up. <laughs> and I don't want to prejudice nobody. Okay, and they got, you got a lot of them in, all over the country. I can just say a city, they got it. I can just name some names. Now, I got to contact Sam Little in Detroit because he inspired me to do this Toby Awards because he has his um, handkerchief head award every week. Okay, let me continue this here. There you go, Sam Balls. You want to know? Rudy, there it is. According to Dr. Anderson, 
This is a black person who betrays the black race for personal and political gain. This includes male or female, Dixie, I mean Democrat or Republican. <laughs> All economic classes. Now, the term Uncle Tom has been used um, to classify these individuals. Or oh, you can throw in their handkerchief head. You can throw in their Toby, the Toby Awards, the Toby, how you identify these people. And this is what Mr. Ronald was talking about. Okay. Um, was a person used from um, position of food and lives of black people. But over the years, it's been, this term sample has been modified. You, 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 know, you want to hold something with a lot of weight. Coonery, buffoon. So Uncle Tom is used both positively and negatively? Well, the term Uncle Tom is in this day and age is used negatively. Okay. Okay. So you gotta go with that. When you say somebody's a Tom and, and they don't think they're a Tom, be ready for a fight. Okay. So this whole thing about Tom, Coonery, um, Tom Foolery, Buffoon, Cooney, handkerchief head, hold enough weight. Now, you, went, you may want to argue mm -hmm. that the good reverend who you just saw, that's what I refer to him as, the good reverend, can be classified as a sandbo. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Since I showed him, I can say his name. Like I said, there's some other people that we can classify. And like I say, they don't have to use it, uh, say how they feel. They can just embarrass themselves or embarrass the gender or embarrass the race with certain photos of themselves. Okay. Hmm. These people are dangerous, man, because they'll do anything for money. So if they're doing it, then you should do it too. You should cool too. Because you won't get paid. And that's why they call you a sellout. Okay. Or you you a snitch. And you telling the police or the FBI or the CIA or some of these other groups. Hey boss. The party is over here. Hey boss, they gonna be um Uprising. This is the thing that they hand out in Texas called the Haywood Shepherd Award. And Haywood Shepherd was the snitch who told that John Brown's forces were coming to Har raid at Harper's Ferry in 1859. And so every year they hand out the Haywood Shepherd Award. And in some place they call it the Toby Awards. Man, I want to say some names, but I can't do that. Didn't, uh, didn't Stacy Dash get nominated for one of those? Keep that to yourself. <laughs> somebody exactly. might say, somebody, Ms., um, well, well, Mona, since Mona said it. Exactly. <laughs> okay, we can talk about it. Since I can't say it, but Mona said, <laughs> see, Mona, somebody might steal your thunder. They might uh, nominate Stacy number one, but they have to explain why. <laughs> Okay, I mentioned a coach's name the other day. He, he, he made the cool list, but he may not be number one. Go ahead, brother Rudy. Well, like, I know, like, Stacey Dash, like, I, I, I know that situation, but, like, doesn't Raisin <laughs> Simone kind of say fall in the same category? Okay, uh, that's, that's another one. Names. That's another one. Keep, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> keep, <laughs> okay, hold on. Y'all keep naming names, but I'm going to tell you something. I mean, she does have a shoe. I understand she, that. But tell, I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be people that get their feelings hurt. There's going to be people that you like. That are going to be mentioned. You just got to suck it up and move on. <laughs> Keep it moving. There's going to be some <laughs> names. Oh, yeah. there, there's, you're going to be embarrassed. People that, look, I'm going to tell you something because I was bringing the director, the certified director on our time. There are people in that book mm -hmm. that I like. Okay, I'm just giving you a heads up. So if I like them, I got to just sit and listen to it. And, it, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of truth. And then when you read them, you're like, wow. If there's a particular individual in that book, y'all going to be shocked by it. And I'm going to make sure that y'all know about it, too. Wait, and you're going to get your hip feelings hurt. OK, go ahead, Brother Rudy. Well, I have one more question. So when we listen to these, these Toby Awards, 
Well, no. See, I see some consternation in his voice. He's nervous. No, I'm not nervous at all. Well, I'm not. Here's my thing. So listen, are you sure? So it's an award, so I know you're supposed to sit here and listen. But That's right. If, if that person is done, can we have a rebuttal? Yeah, you can respond. Okay, well then that's it. That's right. right. Well, they're going to stand on who they believe, who is their number one coon, Toby, Hickerton, mm -hmm. and Uncle Tom. It's their show. It's their list. But then we can, we can say what we have to say at the end. I would advise you to sit, uh, wait till everybody is done, because you might, somebody might say something and you ain't went yet. You haven't presented yet. Okay. Okay? So you got to sit and take it. Because I got to take it. Okay? Um, I don't know. I like. See, you know, when people, wait a minute, when people ask questions, you know they worry. I'm not worried, whoa, whoa. I'm not worried. I just want to know. Okay. Because in, in case, I, I don't want to do anything inappropriate. Like I could, you know, it's like to say my favorite girl, and I'd be, I'd be wanting to fight. Well, I'd be wanting to fight. Okay. Okay. So that's why you got to make sure. sure. And you got to. You got to take it. I want to make sure I do it. You got to take it. Let me know. Let me double say his thing. Go ahead, me know. Are we, are we the only race that have this issue? Nope. There other nope, there's other races. In fact, in age, again, they call uh, people who, um, as Mr. Ronald mentioned, they might be, one call them outside, and they say they call them bananas. Mm. Okay. So everybody, if, if, if you listen to Malcolm X, Malcolm X talks about, um, they have these individuals, they deal with their Uncle Toms. You know, what, how do you deal with a snitch? And see, it, it manifests itself in so many ways. It's not just um, the, you know, what, what you saw the good, with the good rep. It's in other ways. Like I said, disrespecting yourself. Okay. Um, taking money. You know, I, I'm going to mention this person who challenged this person who I know is a cool one. Brother Dr. Cornell West told a brother, brother, you, who, get off the plantation. Whose payroll are you on? Mm -hmm. He was talking about what happened in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you could look that up for the challenge because it was on CNN. Okay, so like I said, it manifests itself in many ways. And sometimes, you know what? You can sit back here through, t through the television lens, tell when you're about to deal with a time. Before they even open their mouth, they just got that time look. <laughs> and that, I'm right. serious. There is just something about them. Um, yeah. They just got that look about them. And you already, you know how you know? know. You already mad and got your mouth pumped up, your nose turned <laughs> up, your meds, your blood pressure. Before they even say a word, you just look at them. Yeah. I just don't like that person. And as soon as they open their mouth, and like I said, you're going to see a lot of them over the weekend, okay, with sports. You're going to see a lot of them today. In fact, some of them support the judge down in Alabama, but that's another story. Okay, so of course, Dr. Anderson Sambo's are used by the social structure to help marginalize. Okay, okay, Blacks and lock them into a permanent underclass. When you saw that skit that we showed earlier with the Toms, okay, you always complain, criticize you because of, uh, you might be speaking out against police and misjustice. You know, like I said, one of the clips I have with the good reverend, where he's criticizing Trayvon Martin's mother. That's why I said, there's some stuff I can't put on, because I know I ain't going to be able to shut you guys up. Because the profanity will come out, and I don't want you to do that. But this is, but some of the things that he says is just, is just very powerful, folks. Okay, the whole thing about it is they get rewards for this. Have you ever noticed on television when there's an issue concerning black people and they'll have a person that's on there to talk about the issue, then they have somebody that counters what they say? And, it's, and, the, and the counter argument is so bizarre. You have to ask yourself, this guy has got to be getting paid. Okay. And Mona mentioned um, Stacey Dash. She mentioned it. I did. She did. I don't know if that's Mona's number one. I don't know. Okay, but the idea. But she says she gets paid. I mean, you know what it is. Somebody had mentioned Raven Simone. Okay. <laughs> so it's just really fascinating, folks. 
these black people uh, allow themselves to be used by the structure that does not have their best interests at heart. You ever notice when they put some of these people on, they never talk, uh, bring them on to talk about economic issues. They never have them on to talk about other issues. They just bring them on. Um, and they have like a um, list of people to call. We want you on as a guest. The producer calls for a particular show. But listen to the arguments. They're pretty, they're pretty bizarre. Okay? Now, let me get you something else for a run out of time. Okay, this is coon, coon, what you call it, coonery? Yeah, coonery. And this is a term used in the 21st century. This is coming around, okay, but we always refer back to this handkerchief head. These interviews sell out for what? Money, gifts, and petty positions. And some of them in your family. You know who your family members are that are coons. Uh -huh. You know who they are. And you know something? You know Miss Halton? Miss Halton? You shake your head. You know people in your family that's a coon? Oh, okay. Thought you said you did. I bet you if you thought about it, you would know. I thought you were thinking about it. Foul. Okay. I don't want you to say no names. Okay. She said I was a coon. I saw a tape. Okay. <laughs> you talk about the petty position gifts. What what position? You might move up in the administration. You know, and we, we talk about Dr. King a lot. Dr. King had a lot of people that were sellouts around him. They didn't have his best interest at heart. Man, I want to say somebody's name, but I'm gonna wait. Mm. Oh man. Because people criticized Dr. King because he spoke out against the Vietnam War. We'll condemn any African American black who condemns um, um, the social structure or status quo. These individuals, the Coons, the Coonin, Coonry. have no interest in improving the race. It's all about them. Selling out for the best interest. Mr. Williams, I was going to ask you to give us an example of a coon. But I'm going to tell you, I hate it, Jeff Hill, but I'm not going to do that. I'll wait. Oh, you got it. All right, Brother JJ. Let's see if Brother JJ has an example of a coon, cooning, coonery, baboon. Go ahead, Brother JJ. Uh, Reggie Bush. Okay, now what did Mr. Reggie Bush do according to JJ? Um, he, he sold out just to get uh, money and get to college. <laughs> he sold out how? How do you, you saying that he disrespected the race of black people? Uh, well, it's just, I guess he was really disrespectful when he's not thinking about it, but he, uh, accepted gifts and you accepted money to play in college. Now, now you can make the argument, JJ, that. And that's if, deep fakes, I guess you could say. Okay, well, you can make the argument that he, he did. You can make that argument. And other black guys are supposed to do the same thing. Keep your mouth shut, get the gifts, don't say anything, don't criticize the status quo. Okay. Okay. Just like that video we watched with the uh, Prisoners of the Game, and you talked about your experiences, um, Mr. Williams, with football. Yes. If you say something that you know that is unjust, if you criticize, and I'm, and I'm glad it's over, Rick Patino, who should never be coaching at all, you get other people who have received monies that will challenge you because you're challenging the status quo. And this is what this is about. This is what coons do. They will challenge you. They will question you. They will criticize you because you're affecting the bottom line. You're affecting their pockets. Even though what you're doing is correct because you're pointing out an injustice. They got them all over. In every aspect of life. You see them in the music industry, especially the videos. You see them in, uh, in sports. You see them in, uh, in politics. And you sit back and you want to ask yourself, what the hell is your problem? <laughs> but then again, 
If you understand a sambo and a coon, you will understand them. And they will be easily to identify. And then your blood, pr your blood, your blood pressure lowers because you understand their actions. If you go into your memory bank, and you probably go into your memory bank after class and over the weekend, because you got to stop thinking about it. who can I put in my top ten? Who's going to be my number one? There's going to be some people that you pull out. You'll be surprised. And you start talking to other people in your family, and that's what I want you to do, because they're gonna, you're going to need your family's help, because they're going to be talking about some people from 30, 40, 50 years ago. And I mentioned um, Dr. King earlier, how so many people sold him out. Malcolm X, how so many people sold him out that were informants. All about personal gain. William O'Neill. Percy, and I can't remember his last name, who was contributing to the murder of Medgar Evans. Now you might say, why, you know, Professor Golden, why are we even talking about these people? Because these people have impacted and changed the direction of history, and they have to be discussed. Because when you think about Marcus Garvey, if you Google Agent 800, okay, that's the person who brought down Marcus Garvey. These people have been amongst us for years. And I'm going to tell you one of the most dangerous people is the one who is in a position that will not pull up the people behind him. I got mine, you get yours. So these people, they know how to do it. This is this, Mr. Brooks. No, 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 no. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, this, this. They got all the shapes. <laughs> they down. We down. They're doing all this, got this, this. <laughs> they got all that. Yeah. Yeah. They do this, you know, yeah. do this. You know, they got all of it down. Okay. One of the biggest towns. Okay. Ooh. See? Some of these rappers. Yeah, I'm going down that street. Some of these rappers. They're coons. Oh. Oh! <laughs> oh! Earlier this year on TMZ. Can I see his name? No, no, no. Don't say it, man, because they might steal. They might, you might steal it. You might steal somebody's thunder, please. Name a song you know who you're talking about. Well, he can't say it. He can't say. He wants to say it. It's yeah, remember that. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough keeping all that stuff in. Clear. Oh, okay. you're right. You're right. Yeah. Stop it, folks. Yes. Dang it, folks. No. Hold on, folks. When you, when you're selecting, hold on, folks. When you're selecting the people in your top ten, and I'm just gonna throw this out to you, mm -hmm. because I know that this would be difficult. I was thinking about putting it in like categories, like you get two for this one, two, two, two. But I'm not gonna do that because that'd be a little difficult. Because you're trying to figure out who can I do for music, who can I do for sports, who can I do for entertainment, politics. I just want you to just list the people based on your experiences. Like I said, other people can help you. Not in the classroom. You can't help each other. No, no, no. But I'm just saying other family members can help you. And so that's something that I want you to think about. Because like I said, this is something that has hurt so many people, so many people. And if you want to localize it, you can, because like I said, we have people in this area as well as um, other parts of the country, depending on where you're from. Because there's a lot of people, Miles, you and Alexis, and this whole, where y'all from, y'all, it's like seven people I can name right off the top of my head, okay? And I'm gonna say this also, that these people also can be deceased. Mm -hmm. because their treachery 
like I said, 1800, we're talking about Marcus Garvey. Um, William O'Neill was killed in 1990 after the documentary you guys watched for his meritorious service and contribution to the FBI. Okay, so these people don't have to be, a, be amongst us. They could be, no. Okay, so that's the thing. But the thing is, cool. Now, is anybody confused about this? It sure is. If we go back, um, Ms. Craig, if we go back to there's male, there's female, I mean Democrat, Republican, um, different categories, different arenas, entertainment, sports, the movie industry, the music industry, um, some uh, people are, that are producers, okay, um, some people that are um, in news, media, there are a lot of them. Some people that um, work for NBC, I'm not going to mention nobody's name, but so this is kind of hard for me uh, to, because I know there's some people that should be number one on y'all list, but I got to sit and listen because it's your show. Somebody might pick a good record. Okay, you might make the list. Um, there's a lot of them on ESPN. <laughs> Not the Hall of Fame. No, no, you, only, you sent me yours, but like I said, that might right. change. Yeah, it, it is going to change. I agree with that. That's why I said the 21st. It is, it is, it is. That's, that's why. That's why. Miss Lawrence sent me some. You got to hold off on it because it's going to change constantly, folks. And I didn't mention, folks. Law enforcement. I'm gonna do this, okay? Because Alexis, I know I got to send you that video, okay? And I won't forget. But I'm gonna write a name down, okay? And this guy might make number one on somebody's list, okay? And you pull up the video after class, not during class, okay? And we got a sister in here from Wisconsin. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the, I'll put his name up for a reason. Okay, because we want to get the law enforcement aspect out. And if you start, Miss Lawrence, no. Yeah. And so there are a lot of people, like I said, that you know that uh, participate in this. And can I add something, folks? These are also people, oh, and I mentioned education. There are a lot of people in education as well. So this is pretty dangerous, folks. Pretty dangerous. <laughs> okay. Let's continue on. These individuals are recruited. They recruit them from HBCUs, historically black colleges. <laughs> Condemn anything or anyone supporting issues concerning black people. Okay. These individuals receive large segments of media attention. Okay, that's important. They receive large segments of media attention. That's important, folks. According to Dr. Anderson, these individuals are recruited from HBCU, and this is what we're talking about. The Haywood Shepherd Award, Snitch, Our Prosperity that I mentioned, 1859, and they call them the Tokyo Awards. And when you're talking to some of the older heads to try to figure out like you're struggling with who you should pick number one or, or this. Um, they might give you a list of names. They might give you about 20 people. You got to do your research, figure out who number one is. Also, you're going to have to cut some of them people down.
but I just wanted to put him up here because the whole thing about the law enforcement um, aspect. And there's several other people that I can put, but he's one that just um, came up. Who's terrible. So who's the first? <laughs> I can't tell you. say who's my first? Who's the very first so far? I don't know. There's so, there's so many of them out there. I don't know who your number one's going to be. You have to figure that out over the weekend. Like I said, you have to pick the person. I have nothing to do with it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come sit down. When you come in the room, I'm going to give you the sheet of paper. Now, you can do one or two things. Okay. You can write down the person and get, show me. Then once you do that, I'm going to put your name on the board and put the person. Once you do that, nobody else can pick that person. And then you got to explain because you're going to defend your position in front of everybody. Are you going to hurt some feelings, B.W.? Probably so. Do you really care? No. And you shouldn't. People just don't have to keep it moving.